study about interaction of ultrasound with tissue, artifacts, applications, advantages and disadvantages, resolution in ultrasonography in detail. First of all, we are going to study about interaction of ultrasound with tissue. Ultrasound produced by the transducer interacts with different tissues in a variety of ways attenuation and refraction these two are the major types of tissue interaction as the ultrasound beam travels through the body it loses energy the intensity and the amplitude of the sound wave decreases and this process is known as attenuation the amount of attenuation that occurs will depend on the type of tissue the sound wave is traveling through attenuation will be much greater in tissues where the molecules are densely packed such as in bone attenuation is less in tissues where the molecules are less densely packed such as in fat attenuation will occur not only in the beam of sound which is produced by the transducer as it propagates through the tissue but it also occur in the returning echoes as they travel back to the transducer attenuation can be caused by reflection scattering and absorption what is reflection reflection is nothing but return of sound wave back to the transducer probe this principle is what allows the image to be generated by the ultrasound machine more reflection results in a more hyper echoic or brighter image any ultrasound that is not reflected will be absorbed by the body so this reflection forms one of the major principles of ultrasound imaging as the ultrasound probe detects these reflected waves to form desired image tissues in our body will be having two types of reflector surfaces the first type is specular or smooth surface and the second type is non-specular or rough surface so this reflection has two types specular reflection and non-specular reflection this specular reflection is seen with specular or smooth surface of tissues this reflection results in more return of the reflected sound waves to the transducer thereby creating more brighter or hyper echoic image non-specular or diffuse reflection is seen with non-specular or a rough surface of the tissues a non-specular or rough surface reflects ultrasound echoes in all directions that is in different directions a non-specular reflection results in less return of the reflected sound waves to the transducer hence the returning echo is weak this non-specular reflection is also known as scattering next is absorption absorption is the reduction in the intensity of the sound waves as it passes through tissues most of the energy lost is in the form of heat as a result none of this energy returned to the transducer to contribute to the formation of image so next is refraction the refraction is nothing but deviation in the path of a beam refraction occurs when the incident sound wave now this is the incident sound wave when this incident sound wave contacts the boundary of tissues now this is tissue 1 and this is tissue 2 now this is the boundary so when the incident sound wave contacts the boundary of tissues of differing velocities or differing speeds of sound at an oblique angle or in a slanting wave there is deviation in the path of the beam so that is known as refracted beam so now this refracted beam travel in a direction that is away from the transducer so there is loss of propagated signal so there is loss of image clarity so this is all about refraction what are all the advantages and disadvantages of ultrasonography now let's see about advantages so it's a readily available simple 
painless non invasive technique this technique is particularly useful in the examination of superficial structures of our body and this technique is relatively inexpensive and it is well tolerated by the patient so equipments are portable and it produces few artifacts images are rapidly acquired and it's very simple to store and retrieve those images and it can be performed without sedation and this technique is highly acceptable by most of the patients and it is of non ionizing in nature and it has no cumulative biological effects on the body and it does not interfere with normal function ultrasonographic examination can be performed even at the patient's bedside and it has the possibility of real time imaging so all these are advantages of ultrasonography now let's see about disadvantages so this technique is very much operator as well as equipment dependent so this technique shows quite difficulty while examining or picturing the temporomandibular joint region because of the limited accessibility of deeper structures especially the disc due to absorption of the sound waves by the lateral portion of the head of the condyl and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone unlike ct and mri scans it's very difficult to orient and interpret images in ultrasonography ultrasound images are affected by inherent noise accompanying the signal returned to the transducer which makes interpretation difficult so interpretation is very difficult in case of ultrasonography and this ultrasonography has to be performed by experienced investigators artifacts or any alterations in the image which do not represent an actual image of the examined area so they may be produced by technical imaging errors or they may result from the complex interaction of the ultrasound with biological tissues posterior acoustic shadowing is created by complete absorption of the sound wave at the structure of high attenuation or high reflection so it is characterized by a hypo intense signal area posterior or distal to a highly attenuating medium like bone or calculus so these highly attenuating structures reduce the intensity of the transmitted ultrasound wave and induce low intensity streaks deeper or distal or posterior to a highly attenuating medium as a result we can see a hypoechoic region posterior to a highly attenuating medium next is acoustic enhancement so this is the exact opposite of acoustic shadowing the basic example for acoustic enhancement is fluid filled structure like cyst attenuation is less in cyst therefore there are more sound waves transmitted to the structures which are present deeper to the fluid filled structure and the resulting echoes from those deeper tissues are brighter than those from a similar depth in adjacent solid tissue so we can see an area of increased brightness posterior to or distal to or behind a structure of low attenuation yet shadowing appears acoustic shadowing zones at the edges of rounded structures mostly fluid filled structures like cyst so this edge shadowing can occur when the velocity of sound in the rounded structure is different from that of surrounding tissues this results from a combination of reflection and refraction occurring at the edge of rounded structures next is reverberation or repetition artifact so in this particular artifact single or same interface is represented in the display at multiple times so multiple echoes are generated between two closely spaced interfaces as a result the ultrasound beam heads reflected back and forth so this is usually caused by reflections between 
transducer and a strong reflector such as metallic subject or bone and these reverberation artifacts appear as series of equally spaced lines next is beam width artifact now at this point we must recall about beam profile normally the width of the main ultrasound beam which leaves the transducer is approximately the same as that of transducer and then it narrows down as it approaches the focal zone or transition point and then it widens again distal to the focal zone sometimes this distal beam may widen beyond the actual width of the transducer this causes this beam width artifact if a highly reflective object is located within this widened distal beam beyond the margin of the transducer there will be generation of echoes now these echoes are displayed as overlapping structures of interest so this is about beam width artifact next is side lobe artifact the side lobe artifact and beam width artifact both look similar but the physics behind these artifacts are entirely different sometimes there is projection of low amplitude ultrasound energy beams radially from the main beam axis now these low amplitude ultrasound energy beams can hit structures which are on the either side of the main image that we are imaging and if those structures are highly reflective they will pick up a signal from those structures and give it back to main transducer so that we can see a linear bright structure within the actual structure so the most common example is cyst so within the cyst we can see a linear bright structure next is electrical artifacts electrical interference is basically caused because of some problem problems in the machine output or it could be related to voltage fluctuation frequency fluctuation or sometimes just because of electrical interference coming from adjacent electrical machines that are working on at the same time as the ultrasound machine next is mirror image mirror image occur where there is a strong specular reflector surface which acts as a mirror hence structures are displayed twice so all these are common artifacts in ultrasonography types of image interpretation in ultrasound includes hyperechoic hypoechoic anechoic and isoechoic regions in case of hyperechoic image returning of echo is very strong it is deflecting from very high density tissue so brighter image is formed in case of hypoechoic image returning echoes very weak this is reflecting from low density tissue so gray to dark image is formed this is seen in association with tumors abscess hematoma and inflammation in case of anechoic image there is complete attenuation there won't be any reflection this is seen in association with fluid or air so here the image is dark black next is isoechoic image so here the lesional area or defective area is producing ultrasound echoes which is equal to those of neighboring normal tissue so here the echogenicity is similar to that of the adjacent tissues now let's learn about applications of ultrasonography the normal salivary gland is slightly hyperechoic when compared to adjacent muscles which appear as hyperechoic band so this ultrasonography is helpful in diagnosing acute as well as chronic inflammations of the salivary gland as well as xylolithiasis xylosis jogren syndrome and neoplasms of the salivary gland particularly pleomorphic adenoma and warty tumors pleomorphic adenomas are usually hypoechoic and they have well defined sharp borders with posterior acoustic enhancement whereas warty tumors appears as an ovoid hypoechoic mass in oral submucous fibrosis ultrasonography plays an important role in identifying number length thickness of the fibrotic bands as well as pattern of overall vascularity in the affected area increased hyperechoic areas 
in oral submucous fibrosis represents the presence of fibrotic bands and this ultrasonography also detects the presence of masseter muscle hypertrophy in patients with oral submucous fibrosis and with the help of this ultrasonography we can detect the presence of systemic sclerosis and localized scleroderma normal lymph nodes appears as flat and hyperechoic structures whereas malignant lymph nodes appears as hypoechoic structures irregular or blurred margins indicate the presence of invasion and this ultrasonography is also helpful in detecting the presence of systemic conditions like tuberculosis eosinophilic granuloma histiocytic necrotizing lymphadenitis sinus histiocytosis lymphoma syphilis cancer of lungs metastasis thyroid cancer articular eminence mandibular condyle of the tmj appears as hypoechoic regions whereas margin of those bones appears as hyperechoic areas surface of joint capsule as well as surface of muscles appears as hyperechoic areas articular disc appears as hyperechoic hypoechoic or isoechoic area this is because of the different structural morphological and positional abnormalities in the patients examined this ultrasonography is also helpful in diagnosing temporomandibular joint disc displacement and temporomandibular joint effusion in case of cyst radicular cyst shows hypoechoic to anechoic lesion odontogenic keratosis shows hypoechoic lesion dentigerous cyst shows anechoic to hyperechoic lesion hemangioma is characterized by homogeneous hyperechoic mass with well defined margins and posterior acoustic enhancement and this ultrasonography especially low intensity ultrasound is useful for treating recurrent aphthous stomatitis so this low intensity ultrasound acts by increasing angiogenesis are inducing granulation tissue formation or it acts by altering the oral microbial flora with the help of ultrasonography we can monitor post surgical healing of periapical lesions and with the help of color doppler we can identify the presence of oral vascular malformations and vascular tumors with the help of ultrasonography we can detect the fractures of mandibular condyle ramus and mid facial region of the face ultrasound guided core needle biopsy submandibular gland injection of botulinum toxin for hypersalivation in cerebral palsy basket retrieval of salivary stones can be done and this ultrasonography can also facilitate osteo integration or bone healing resolution in ultrasonography is of three types contrast resolution temporal resolution and spatial resolution contrast resolution refers to ability of an ultrasound system to demonstrate differentiation between tissues having different characteristic features it's like differentiating liver from spleen temporal resolution refers to the ability of an ultrasound system to accurately show changes in the underlying anatomy over time spatial resolution is the ability of ultrasound system to detect and display structures that are close together and the spatial resolution can be of two types axial resolution and lateral resolution axial resolution is the ability to separate two closely spaced interfaces along the direction parallel to the beam lateral resolution is the ability to separate two closely spaced interfaces that are seen perpendicular to the direction of the beam